are back with Behind the Bikini episode number 34. We are rolling along here. The season is getting hotter by the day. It's crazy um, how fast everything is going now at this point. Um, and as we go into today's topic, we're going to be talking about cheating <laughs> and refeeds and free yep. meals. <laughs> so it's not as juicy as the thumbnail would lead you to believe, but <laughs> it's still, it's still, but still a hot about. topic. It's still a hot yeah, topic. It absolutely is. Topic. So um, it's something I think a lot of, uh, at least I know the girls that, that I work with ask me about all the time. So we'll definitely get into that. Um, but before we do, how are you doing over there? How's everything going? Good. Uh, pretty straightforward week. It was my birthday last week, so mm -hmm. I had a lot of friends in town celebrating and um, had a really nice weekend with everyone. Um, and then right back to work on Monday. So, um, but everything's going good. We're just rolling through on prep. I it was able to have some intuitive eating days over the weekend, uh, which we kind of planned for, kind of get a little bit of a mental reset. Now we're gonna push. So yeah. I'm super excited. I'm ready to be lean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you felt like your progress is going good since you started the whole cut thing situation? Yeah, I do. I, I, I always, I'm a little bit slow to drop, but we were seeing some, some pretty good drops, um, ahead of time uh, before my birthday. And then slowly this week, my weight's starting to come back down too. I'm very visually leaner right now. Uh, Drew keeps making comments and then people in the building keep making comments. So things are moving. Um, so just getting back to the grind. We had to bump up cardio intensity this week. So I'm getting used mm. to that and managing my schedule and everything that comes with prep, you know, just, just, yeah. just the normals. I think that for, for me, and this is what I realized even yesterday is that once the cardio intensity starts getting bumped up, it's like, that's when you start to feel like you're actually in prep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause, cause yeah. I don't ever feel the food, you know what I mean? Like until you get towards the end where you're really hungry and things like that, I don't really feel the food dropping, but you feel the cardio. I, I mean, I do at least. So yeah. it's it. I just, and that was actually something. So I've been having an issue with like mentally connecting with, okay, I'm going back into prep. You know what I mean? And this week, my cardio intensity went up this past week. And I was like, all of a sudden, yesterday, it kind of clicked that I'm like, okay, I'm good. Like, I'm, I'm ready to do this. You know what I mean? It wasn't, okay. until, it wasn't until yesterday, where I was like, I think I think I'm ready for this now. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't mind cardio to an extent, but it's always the just starting it and getting it going part that I'm just like, ah, oh. But then once yep, you start in getting in the groove, minutes. yeah, it's like once you start getting in the groove, it's really not that bad once you get in the groove, but it is literally the last thing that I want to do of my day, you know, and, yeah. and there's that, there's that, that book, my husband always talks about it. It's called the, um, eat the green frog. So you do the thing that you don't want to do first. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, maybe I should start doing that because that is literally the last thing on my list is cardio. I'm like, Oh. It's That's what I like to do. I like to get yeah. it done first thing in the morning. And then that way I know it's off my list and then yeah. I do some client work and then do my lift and then go back to, you know, work. And that's, that is like the key to prep though, is finding like mentally and, you know, what makes sense with your schedule to make sure yeah. that you keep your stress low. And it's all about your schedule. Like that's yeah. why we're so type A. Type A yeah. people do really well in this sport for that reason. But it's funny how everyone's different that way. Yeah. And, you know, you just get into habits. And I've been in the habit of, of not doing it, you know, and I'm just like, maybe I should, maybe I should just start tweaking that a little bit just so I feel a little bit better about it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if I actually do that or not. Play with it. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. We'll see if we actually do that. Um, but yeah, it was it was finally like a switch started going off yesterday, and I'm like, okay, I think I, I think I'm I'm in this now. Um, but yeah, I was I was telling you before we got on here, this was a very rough week for me. <laughs> and um, you know, I got my period on Monday, or I'm sorry, I got my period on Sunday. Um, literally right as I was finishing my training. So I was like, oh, that's that's good because now I I have a rest day tomorrow. So at least I my full like first day of my, of my cycle will be a rest day, which is great. But it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I, I don't, I don't ever remember it hitting me that hard. Like ever, I, you know, I got up on Monday and I was like, I'm in pain, but I got to do work. So I, I sat down and just was like, okay, I'm going to get everything done, get everything done, get everything done. So I got everything done by about three o'clock in the afternoon that I needed to get done, like check-ins and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to lay down for a minute. <laughs> a minute turned into an hour and a half and I was like oh my god and then I still didn't want to get up I was in so much pain I was so tired so fatigued I was like holy shit man like so I got up and I ate something and then I sat back down on the couch again and I'm like no 
mm, no, you were done. <laughs> I was like, that was it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make myself get up and get, get out like a cardio walk in. So it was a nice day outside, all that kind of stuff. So I went out and I did my, I was, I walked for an hour and I got back to the house. I was like, I'm going to lay back down now. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to lay back down. So I, that was literally my day. And then you know, on top of that, the hard part that we've been dealing with is, you know, last week our water pump blew at our house and um, we just got running water back as of like yesterday and and today is finally able to be using it again kind of thing. Because what happens too is we had to replace the water pump and we have we, we had to, you know, pull it out and put it back in. So now all this sediment and all this kind of crap is in the water that's been sitting there for last week. So we got to get that all the flush through. We had to put new bladder, new Oh my God, it's just been a thing, huge thing. And it's still not, it's still not completely fixed. At least we have running water. At least we can take showers because I've been going to the gym every day to take showers. <laughs> I was just about to ask, but then I was like, no, that's not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. it's been, it's been terrible. So, and and this is, I said this to Jamie in my check in today. I was like, actually my water intake as far as drinking has been off this week. I said, because we've had to use our drinking water in order to flush the toilets and brush our teeth and like wash our faces. Like we're taking gallon jugs that are normally in our water cooler and that's what we're using it for so it's like oh my god like the simple things in life that you don't think about it's been you're getting a taste of like a florida experience with the hurricanes hurricanes yeah i know that's like the normal i'm like i didn't didn't move to florida i don't want that shit (laughs) (laughs) like no that's not good sign up for that (laughs) no that's why i'm in virginia (laughs) like i'm all over it Uh, um but it's just it's just, you know, the simple things that you don't think about, just even being able to flush the toilet. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, it's like, it's oh, a luxury. It is doing laundry, washing dishes. Mm-hmm. All, mm-hmm. We, we've been eating, eating off of paper plates, you know, and it's just like, how much the longer? I'm like, I've got this big, beautiful house and it doesn't fucking work. Right. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? You know, it's a funny house. It looks good, but <laughs> yeah, it looks you can't crazy. use it. You can't use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically how this week has been. So, you know, and on top of that, like when I when I have my cycle, I like to take Epsom salt baths and, and soak and things like that. I can't do that. I haven't been able to take a bath oh, yeah. all weekend. And you're just, you want to just, yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have water on your cycle for a couple of reasons. <laughs> for a lot of reasons. I'm yeah. just like, oh my God. I mean, thankfully, you know, Planet Fitness is right down the street. Like I could literally walk to Planet Fitness if I wanted to. So it's not that big of a deal as far as going down there to take a shower and stuff. But man, just like. Just a pain. It's yeah. Just a pain in the ass. More than pain, anything else, a pain in the ass. And I, you know, I have an in studio. I take uh, clients here on Saturdays in studio, and I had to tell them all I got to take down FaceTime because I have no running water. You know, like if you come here, great, but it's gonna smell like crap. You, like everything no. is a mess. There's mud all over everything. I'm like, you know, like you can't See, use the uh, bathroom. You know, I was yeah. like, you can't use the bathroom. I'm like, I'm sorry. We're just going to do this during FaceTime, like like typical. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But oh, it's been a week. It's been a week. I know. I'm like, but I woke up today. I was like, I was able to take a shower in my house for the first time in a week. So that, that's already positive. It's like one of those <laughs> things where like, yeah, now you're used to not having running water. Yeah. And you're like, is it that's work? exactly what it is. I was like. Oh, please turn on. Please turn on. Please turn on. Isn't it so funny how quickly you adapt to something? Like something that's so normal, just turning on your water, taking a shower, and then within days, that's not normal anymore. (laughs) I know. And plus, you know, when I do my check-in, so I have a routine, you know, on Wednesday nights, I usually take my my Epsom salt bath and I put on my self-tanner. I I do self-tanner every Wednesday night so that Thursday morning I rinse it off and I do my check-ins. I have a little bit of color because you can see clearly I'm white as a ghost. So at least I have a little bit of color on me. So I'm like praying that I wake up this morning and I can rinse the tan off <laughs> like, oh yeah because today's yeah. Thursday, your check-in day yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. i'm like okay if i can't rinse the tan off i gotta go get a gallon jug of, of drinking water and like <laughs> like this to the bathtub or something i'm like what the hell is the water clear yet <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah pretty much i'm so proud of myself i'm actually carrying a tan right now i've been doing a little bit of laying out here in arizona and i don't look so ghostly right now everybody's like it. wow you look alive i'm like thank you <laughs> you know isn't it i gotta funny? do it now I yeah, right now, in a yeah few like, I won't be able to. Just a little bit of color makes such a big difference. It really man. does. Uh, like I noticed like an improvement season, a hot tip for everybody when you're like not feeling yourself because you're not lean and things like that. A tan makes a world of difference. And really? eyelashes. I don't yeah. know why. Yes, lashes. A tan and eyelashes. Lashes. And, well, that's I the other thing too. I, I haven't been doing because I do the lashify, so I do the DIY lash extensions, and I haven't been doing those all week either because you can't like 
I'm like, okay, if they get screwed up, I can't like wash them off easily. Like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> just stupid stuff. I'm so like, like oh. where's my life? What's happening to my life? <laughs> right? Oh. So yeah, so that's been my life this this last week. So, you know, cross our fingers that we still have running water for a while because the the wiring is still messed up and we still have to get them out here to fix the wiring. So what happens sometimes is that if it gets overheated, it'll just shut off. It's an automatic mechanism. So like it doesn't, so that your water pump doesn't blow out. So it'll just shut off. And all of a sudden we have no water. <laughs> then we have to wait for everything to cool back down before it'll turn back on again. So we'll pray for you. We're praying for you. For water, I like just for something so simple. Um, I know. Uh, but beyond that, like you said, like as far as like prep is concerned, the, another hard thing for me this past week is I've been force feeding myself. I've had a, such a hard time with appetite. I, I I can't like I was not hungry, and I'm sure it has to do with my cycle. Stress, you know, things like that. Stress, exactly. Yes. Um. In so I just started getting a little bit hungry again yesterday. Um, I even wrote this into my check-in with Jamie. I was like, I, and I reached out to her a couple days ago. I was like, what can I do? Like to try, I feel like I'm force feeding myself. You know what I mean? And she's like, well, she's like, well, I looked at your food log and you're already doing stuff that's low volume. I go, I know because I'm trying to just trying to get the calories in, you know? And, uh, she's like, I would say, just try to put as much of your food towards the beginning of the day as you can. So that by the time you get to the end of the night, you don't feel like you're trying to stuff your face, you know? So I've been switching that around to eating as much food as I can earlier in the day. But, um, but you know, I, I, I started, again, I started to get a little bit hungry last night, a little bit. So I think the cardio is also helping with that too. Um, you know, I think the cardio is helping to ignite the, the hunger. So I'm good with the cardio right now. <laughs> I'm like, it's actually it's helping, helping me eat. It's helping me eat. So yeah. I'm okay with that. You know, um, shape wise, I'm, you know, I'm happy with my shape and I sent her in a couple of, she actually, I saw the, the message come in. She responded to my text at my, uh, my check-in as we're sitting here. So, of uh, that, that suck? Review. Cause you're like, I want to know what you're <laughs> I know. Doing. I'll have that to review when we get done here and figure out what we're doing different. So, um, if anything, or if we're just going to keep going, cause that's the other thing too, like with, with my cycle and stuff, I didn't, I didn't gain weight. I stayed the same. I stayed the same weight this week. So I thought, you know, usually with my cycle, I go up, you know, and even so right now, drop I'm after your period. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm still pretty, it's, which is crazy. I'm still pretty heavy right now. So I'm hoping for me, it's actually not bad, but for me, it's heavy. Like as far as what do you mean? Off concerned. season weight or what do you mean? No, 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 no. My flow. Oh, got it. Yeah. My cycle. So typically like typically the first two days are my heaviest. So it would be like, you know, Monday. So it was Sunday afternoon is when I got oh, yeah, it. Cause we're still Thursday. So like, got it. Thursday. Yeah. So yeah. I was still, I was so still pretty I'm heavy yesterday for you then. Yeah. Very. Well, and this is the other thing too, that I realized, and I was trying to think if I did anything different this month that I didn't, I haven't done in the past. I was taking these flow gummies, right? I was just, it, it just, that's what they're called. They're called flow. And, um, I stopped taking them last month just cause I thought that it was, maybe it was just a placebo effect. Yeah. I just thought maybe it was, it was just me thinking that they were doing something better. <laughs> no, they actually were <laughs> I'm like, Oh, Get those back. <laughs> yeah. So I ordered those like two days ago. I was like, no, we're, we're, we're getting on those again. <laughs> like yeah. that definitely was helping. So, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because sometimes you don't realize it until you stop doing it. And and I'm like, Oh, I, 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 I was racking my brain. I'm like, what did I do differently this month? Why is it so bad? You know what I mean? And that was the only thing I can point to is I was taking those gummies and I was taking those gummies nonstop since off season last year. So I just decided to cycle off them because I was just changing out some of my supplements and things like that, you know, and I was like, oh, I'll just not do these for a little bit. <laughs> no, we're going back on them. They work. <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> I want to see that they're called flow gummies. Yeah. FLO. Mm -hmm. FLO. Yep. Right, yep. So. so they, they, and they have capsules too. Um, I've just been taking the gummies. This is what I, what I take. Um, and uh, they just got a bunch of stuff in there to help, like natural ingredient type stuff, like um, oh, raspberry. Yeah, yes, 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 stuff like that, just to help with the with PMS symptoms. That's it. And you just cool. take the gummies every day. So I take oral uh, raspberry when I feel like I'm getting a cycle because yeah. it's supposed to like help produce and then take um, help with the symptomology and things like that. So I'm gonna look yeah. into those. Those are interesting. Yeah. Did you? So the question: Did you actually end, end up having a bleed last this last month or no? Nope. But I got no. this guy now. And is that the aura ring? Yes. Okay. How do you like that? I like it a lot. Um, I'm really, I'm trying to get away from this if I can, because Mondays and Wednesdays right now, work-wise, I am just insane. I have my phone on D&D &D literally from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed because work is insane. So I feel so like 
inundated if my if I feel like my wrist is going off. But I'm trying yeah. to get the data from both. So now I have this, I have the Apple Watch, and I have the Sleep Aid on my bed. So so far, the Sleep Aid and this are pretty damn spot on as okay. terms of sleep score. What I'm finding is off is the step count. So the first few days that I was wearing both, the steps were like right on within like 300 to 500 of each other. But okay. yesterday it was 15K on my watch and I only, I had 21 or 20K on here. So I'm oh. wondering if, again, a heavy check-in day, I'm having, if I'm typing, it might oh. have like affected it. Um, so I'm just gonna keep wearing both. But what I love about it is it's, it's, the body temperature it's literally okay. tracking the body temperature every day and that's how okay. they how it kind of protects the predicts the cycle so i'm yeah. so interested to see if it's gonna if it's gonna tell me <laughs> what it thinks these are the things I, we get excited about like, <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> these are the yeah, things I'm we get nerd. excited about <laughs> every morning i'm like is it telling me is, does it think i'm getting I a period know. what does it think it's doing <laughs> that's so funny yeah i don't go mine doesn't go because like, i just have the watch so i don't go in that that in depth with yeah. all the temperatures and stuff but um, I've been using the same tracker app since 2008. So it was back when it was just a, um, a website, it wasn't even an app back then. <laughs> it was just a website. Which one did you, you go use? On. It's called Fertility Friend. I started using okay. it when Dan and I, I started flow. dating. Yeah, I started oh, using fun. it when Dan and I started dating Funny. so I could track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, good. we're good. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're good. We're not good. We're good. We, we're yeah. Good now. No, no, not good now. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, that was, that, was, that was where it started. And I haven't stopped using it since. So it's got all of my data in there since data. 2018. Or 2008. And even without a bleed, like, I still track the symptoms. Like, yeah. even if I'm not bleeding, yeah. I will still go into that flow app and track symptoms. Because that's important. Yeah. Because then you could kind of see if you're if you are go cycling or when you think you're ovulating. And I tell the girls all the time that are starting to get their period backs, like use that flow app and anything that you think is off or a symptom, log it, track it. Like yeah. and that will give the app more predictability in the future. You know? Right. Well, and that was the thing because like last month I had no symptoms at all. Like I was saying, I was like, this is the easiest period I've had ever last month. And I was like, I didn't even feel it coming, nothing. And then this month it was like, I was super emo on like Saturday, on Saturday. And like, I was like, I, was, I wanted to cry and scream at the same time. And I was like, okay, it's definitely coming. That's not you. <laughs> no, that's, I was like, that's no, I'm like, I'm, this I'm is, usually this like, is flow. I'm like right here. And I was like, I know this is not right. So I know that it's coming. And like, I, you know, usually that happens in the, in the first, you know, a couple of days leading up to it. And then as soon as it hits, I'm like, okay. And then I get real, I still am emotional, but at least you know why, at least you know why Absolutely. It's there. until it actually hits. You don't know, you don't know exactly why you're feeling the way you're feeling, but I'm like, I'm usually pretty placid. Like on those days when I, when I have those, like I sit in my notepad and I just type everything out so that I don't like react emotionally to something because I'm like, I know this is, this is my body going crazy inside, mm -hmm. me, you know? So instead of me like going off on Dan for no, no good reason or whatever, I just sit in my notepad and I'm like, I'm going to just type this all out because when my, my period actually hits, I can go back and read it and be like, Oh yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Cool. I was psycho that in that moment. <laughs> I was being crazy. It's okay. I'll be all right. So yeah, exactly. absolutely. Um, oh, it, saved, it saved me so many problems. <laughs> so many fights, so many arguments. Yes. I'm saved your marriage. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, and even not even not even the marriage thing too, but even with clients and stuff like that. Oh. Like, they, I'm like, oh my god, this is annoying me so bad. Why is it annoying me so bad? She's not doing anything anything wrong, but it's annoying the shit out of me. I was like, I gotta take this up. <laughs> I don't go off on her for no reason because it's not her no. fault, you know. <laughs> Those are the messages I type, and then I'm like, I reread it, and I'm like, no, and I just delete, delete, delete. Yes, yes. See so, for later. Come back to yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, ladies, just so you know, we get like that too. <laughs> Even as coaches, we have to sit back and be like, breathe for a second. <laughs> that's a that's a daily practice. That's a yeah. daily practice. Yeah, especially when you're deep deep in peak week. I have so many girls right now that are first time competitors, and they're about. Yeah. They're about in that eight to six week out mark and they're you know messaging me and they're like, Jordan, I'm so irritable. I am so angry and yep. I'm wanting to be reactive. Is this normal? I'm yep. like, Yep, welcome yep. to prep. I just, <laughs> but I why? Said, and I'm like, I'm telling you it's normal. It's very normal. You just have to I, yep. <sighs> take deep breaths. <laughs> I just had one of my first because you know, I just started coaching on one of my first um, competition clients do that last night and send me a message and I said, We have a posing session tomorrow night. I said, let's hold this and put a pin in it. I said, and we'll talk through it. 
and I sent her our our um our podcast with the five week out freak out. I said, like, watch this. <laughs> I'm like, we'll go through it tonight. We'll we'll, we'll go, go through all your concerns and everything like that. Talk it out and everything. I said, but watch this first. <laughs> That's actually a popular one. I don't know if you've had, I'm, I'm sure you had girls reach out to you about the five yeah. week freak out one. And I yeah. had a lot of people reach out and they're like, oh my God, I'm not alone. And I'm like, yeah, no, we yeah. all do it. it That's why it's coined the five week freak out. <laughs> but you guys feel that way too. Like you guys feel like you're not ready. I'm like, Yes, there's been mm-hmm. many shows where right before stage, I'm like, I'm not ready. And we do fine. So you just mm-hmm. got to stay on plan. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, and, and like I said, too, I think that comes in to play other places, too. And I think it just hits your hardest at that point. Like I was saying for myself, like even right now, I question things, you know. I think you start questioning things when you start going into prep. And like I said, like last night, I was like, for the first time, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm like settling into this now. I'm settling, settling into this idea. Because a lot of, I don't know about you, but I'll go through an improvement season and I'll be like, did I really do enough? You know, am I really ready to start this again? <laughs> you know? And it's and the I, fear <laughs> for me of like the, I don't know what, like the anxiety of just switching gears. Like I get anxiety when I go from prep to improvement. I do and too. then I get anxiety when I go from improvement to prep. It's just, Same. it's that change of gears. And just like you said, am I ready for all this cardio? Am I ready to mm-hmm. follow a diet? Am I ready to not have a track meal? Like, am I ready for all this? And then it just mm-hmm. takes about a week and then you're like, okay, I'm in it. We're here. Let's yep. go. Let's roll. Yep. But it takes that shift. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. you had that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I finally, I finally got the shift. Took me a yeah. couple weeks. Took me getting through my 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 period and all that stuff too to get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, okay, got it. <laughs> yes. Oh, the things we deal with. The things we deal with. So Interrupting like our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners. Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep, You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code QTIES15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama Cutie sent you. So with that, let's go into our topic for today. So um, let me pull it up. All right, so my coach caught me cheating. We're going to talk about cheat meals, refeeds, free meals, what they are, what the differences are, when you should be having them, when you shouldn't, all of the fun things when it comes to that kind of stuff. So the first thing that I kind of wanted to go into with this is that um, I know for a very, very long time, these have been called cheat meals. Um, And I don't know about you, but I don't like that verbiage. I don't like that word, um, cheat meals. Me neither. I find myself even saying it. because it's just been what people have said forever. You know what I mean? But it's, it's triggering, you know, it, it, is. It, it, it basically means it's bad, right? Correct. Eating, eating foods is bad. Uh, eating foods that are not on your plan is bad. Um, and that creates a cycle. It creates a mental cycle of, okay, when do I get to be bad again? You know what I mean? When do I get to cheat again? Um, so th- that's one of the things I think about um, macros that is so freeing because there's no such thing as bad foods anymore, right? There's no such thing as cheating anymore, right? You're not you're not cheating. You're not doing anything doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything that's that's um, going to hinder your progress. This is actually going to help you when it's when it's implemented correctly. So I really encourage when I'm bringing on new clients. I see this the most because they come at me with the you know when do we eat cheat meals kind of thing. And that always makes me laugh too. It's like when you first start out start out as a new client. It's like when do I get a cheat meal? <laughs> I'm like never. You don't get a cheat meal. <laughs> period. You don't get a cheat meal. Um, <laughs> so um, because it's just a different it's a different verbiage. It, 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 it you know and you may not realize what it's doing to your brain, but it, it ends up giving you a bad relationship with the food that you are or are not eating. Um, so instead of calling them cheat meals, we want to call them refeeds or free meals or something along that line. Because again, when we go back to macros, there's no bad foods. When we're talking about macros, there's no such thing as bad foods and good foods. It's just food. 
And there's stuff that's better as far as nutrient content and fueling is concerned versus fun foods. And again, going back to this is not a cheap food, food, it's a fun food, you know, that that again, verbiage that matters, how you view the food is what matters. Um, Because the biggest thing I think that has changed as far as my brain shift when it comes to cheat meals versus a free meal or refeed is when I was calling them cheat meals. I felt like I had to eat everything all at once as much as I could before I couldn't cheat, have another cheat meal again, right? Versus yep. now I call them free meals and it's like, okay, I can eat whatever I feel like eating versus feeling like this is a, there's a stop point and an end point and I can't go past this. You know, it's just, it again, it goes back to a negative connotation versus this is working for me for part of my goal, whatever my goal is at that particular time. So your thoughts on this, on this particular part of this topic? No, absolutely. I think everything that you said is correct. And, you know, the the important thing to protect here is the mental space. And it's so funny how, you know, the a word can change your perception of it mentally. Um, I, I agree. I use the term untracked meals or free meals um, and then refeeds for a specific purpose that we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, cheat meals, again, it just makes food seem good or bad. And, you know, even with good nutrient dense whole foods, you could still be overeating. You could mm-hmm. still be overeating on rice, oats, you know, all these good foods and still be gaining weight or causing digestional issues. How many times in a prepper girls, you know, upping their fiber to crazy amounts and stuffing it with lettuce and vegetables just to try to get full and then they're causing GI issues or mm-hmm. increasing their weight because the volume in their stomach is higher. Like that is, you know, not necessarily the way that we should be prepping. Um, yep. So in so again, good foods can still turn a bad outcome and bad foods or, you know, what, what did you, the word you just described it as, I forget what word you just said, more processed foods. They're not oh, bad yeah, yeah, foods, yeah. it's just, fun it's foods. just choosing the fun foods, fun foods. Mm-hmm. choosing the, the appropriate food type at the time of working toward your goal. Um, yep. But that's again, why macros is so freeing because mm-hmm. it does allow you to get some things into your macros. I don't know if I've told the story on the podcast before. I remember my very first prep, there was a day that I was literally crying and having a complete meltdown because I just wanted one Oreo cookie, just one. And Drew kept saying, call your coach. This was before Jamie, call your coach, call your, I was on a really strict meal plan, call your coach. And I'm like, no, I can't because I don't want to tell him that I'm dying. And so he ends up calling my coach and the coach is like, yeah, she could have an Oreo. Maybe she should have two. Yeah. And it was mm-hmm. fine. I just wanted the Oreo cookie and I was fine. So um, it's 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 really that that mental shift in the way that you're approaching the untracked yeah. meal. And then you said something very interesting too of, you know, people, especially newer competitors get into this thought of, oh my God, they gave me the untracked meal. Now I have to eat everything in sight because I only get this one night and then that's where the binging starts to happen. So again, mm-hmm. that's what the mental mindset of what you're pr- approaching that meal with is so important. Absolutely, absolutely. And actually I have a little story time here too, myself with an ex coach like this is a long story but um I I was lean very very lean uh this particular coach dieted me hard like hard 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 and they would give me cheat meals and they would actually tell me to eat an entire pizza not a piece don't go get them they this was my specific instructions to go get a medium pizza and eat the entire thing and I said, I've never done that in my life. <laughs> I was like, I've never, I'm like, I like pizza to an extent, but I actually don't like pizza that's here because I'm from New York and I only like New York pizza. But anyway, <laughs> that's another story. But so he literally told me to go order a, a medium pizza and eat the entire thing. And I felt mm-hmm. so sick at the end of that. Yeah, that's and the I, worst. I was like, well, I, I, and that was one of those coaches that was like, if you question something, they were like, because I told you so. That he, he was one of those. <laughs> so basically he was, he was starving me and he was trying to get me, get more food in me. So I didn't die is basically what he was trying to do. That's that was his reasoning. But again, that creates a bad, bad mental connection to food. You know, Absolutely. Like, I, I, I didn't even want it. I felt sick. You know, it was gross. I was like, I, at most when I have pizza, I'll have two pieces at most. That's, that's, that's like the I'll worst. Eat. That's like, to me, the worst free meal. Like it's yeah. all fats. It's yeah. all oil, bread, dairy, and yeah. 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 I love pizza. Don't terrible. get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love a little good crispy thin sliced pizza mm-hmm. like anybody else, but that is the worst. Absolutely. Attract me all you can do for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause it's not even close to anything you typically eat during a prep. You know what I mean? Right. It's just like, it's all sodium, yeah. all carbs, all fat, all, ugh, all grease and grossness. 
and you do, you feel disgusting afterwards. I, I literally felt sick eating it. I'm sitting there eating this pizza. I'm like, do I really have to eat this whole pizza? Like that was, he, he was telling me I had the whole pizza. So there are, there are some, there's some, <laughs> some, some sketchy things going on in the coaching world. Sometimes you guys, that makes zero sense. When you that would back and think not about be it, correct. No, yeah. that would be the wrong way to do a cheat meal. Yeah. That would be the mm-hmm. wrong way to do it. And he called it a cheat meal too. He called it a cheat meal. So yeah, wrong way to do it. Definitely wrong way. Absolutely. Um, and this was also one of those coaches that made you eat like pop tarts and gummy bears and all that kind of stuff before you went on stage. So it was, it was that person. So anyway, <laughs> those are wrong too, by the way. <laughs> Not Sean and I's coaching style. No, not at all. Not at all. Just not at all. Um, no. So going back to, um, so in in your opinion, what is the difference between a free meal and a refeed? What are what are what are the reasonings behind those? And this is the, this is the biggest question because sometimes I'll be on a console call and the girls will be like, I'm, I get a refeed every week, and I'm like, that's you don't get a refeed every week. But that's so. To me, the the difference between a refeed and a free meal or an untracked meal is a refeed is when it's absolutely needed for a purpose, a metabolic purpose. Most of the time when you're very, very deep in prep, you're very lean and there's symptoms and signs that you're looking for in biofeedback of of when to structure that kind of refeed. An untracked meal or a free meal, um, that's, you know, things that are coming more in the off season, you know, so in off season, you know, you and your coach can talk about whether you go out to eat once a week, you have a specific set of macros that you eat beforehand, or maybe you have an intuitive eating day, but it's more of that mental flexibility. Um, There's not really a structured purpose behind the food and it building something and, and things like that. Um, And again, clients are doing this in different ways. Sometimes they do like a flex meal. I know Jamie does this a lot where they'll Mm -hmm. give, she'll give her clients, you know, X amount of calories that they can go over in one day. I also do this with some of my clients that need a little bit more structure and just like the the type A people, they like to plan, they like to use their macros. So they know that they have X amount of extra calories that they consume on a day and they can put the macros however they want to, or some, you know, that clients I've been working with for a while or that I trust, um, they have a little bit more autonomy autonomy, flexibility, more intuitive eating, they don't have to track as much, etc. But then they're not overdoing it. Um, so it's really about kind of that mental flexibility versus mm-hmm. like a, a purpose, a need, a GI issue, a metabolic issue, something that you're trying to see. And the coach with a refeed should have a structured detail of we're doing this and I want to see this because we're yeah. trying to see that that metabolic change or that GI change, whatever we're trying to fix almost. Yep. Agreed. And um, just to go on to that, we're going to go into more detail with the refeeds, but just to kind of um, tap onto that uh, free meal, uh, I find that the free meals help a lot with off season, you know, when you're coming out of a prep, that's typically when I have the free meals built in and they kind of go a bit depending on your mentality and things like that too, and how well you can control this. And again, this is something you communicate with your coach. Um, the way that I, that I've had it structured with Jamie in the past is um, when I come out of prep, I'll have one free meal a week. Um, and I can use that for a date night out or whatever. But for me, that's just the opportunity to not track anything that night. You know, like I can just go and I can order from the menu and not have to look at the nutritional information and things like that. Um, and in doing that, I don't ever, ever go way overboard. I don't eat a lot of crap. I don't, um, if I was to track it, I would probably be a little bit over my, my actual macros, um, they'd probably distrib- be distributed a little bit differently. Like I'd have more carbs and fat and protein or something along that line. So that's typically what you're going to get when you go out to a restaurant, you know? Um, <clears throat> but it's not super off from what I would normally eat, right? But it just gives you the ability to, okay, I don't have to track this tonight, right? The rest of the day, I'm eating just like I normally eat, right? That's, that's another aspect of it too. What a lot of people will do is they'll not eat all day long so they can go have their free meal that night. I don't think that's exactly the right thing to do either. <laughs> you know, we're talking about balance here. So you're, you're not saving your calories for that meal, right? It's just an untracked meal. You can have it however you want to have it, but eat like you normally do the rest of the time, right? Um, and it's, this goes back to a lot of people still are in that concept of nutrient timing, meaning you can't eat carbs before bed, or you're going to gain fat and stuff like that. That's just non-existent. That doesn't, that's not the thing. It's not a thing. So you can eat whatever you want during your free meal. And typically that that free meal, as we get through into um, off season a little bit more, gets a little bit stricter. So like you said, the flex meal. So she'll start giving you flex calories where you can eat an extra 500 calories. So now we're getting back into the, okay, let's start tracking everything again now. But you've got an extra 500 calories to play with, right? You can have them so you don't have to specifically hit your, your macros that day. 
And then once we get through that point mentally, again, this is all for me, it's all mental. It's not physical, it's mental. So then once we get past that point and we're ready, again, we were just talking about having to, having to switch gears into prep. This is having to switch gears into a full improvement season, right? So Correct. going from, yep. from getting your hunger levels under control, coming out of prep and things like that, um, again, just gives you that mental freedom to know that you can do this. And, and I, don't, I know for myself, I don't find myself going overboard, you know, um, when, again, I go back to my previous experiences where it was just like a cheat day or a cheat meal and it was just free for all, everything you could possibly eat, you know, it was there, just take it, you know, and um, it was bad. I would go on these binges, you know, and, and, and I think a lot of people do that. I think that's how a lot of people operate right now. Um, and it's physically and mentally a whole lot more stable and freeing when you don't operate like that and you operate it from a free meal or a flex calories kind of standpoint. So um, if you've never done it that way before, I would suggest talking to your coach and just trying it out and seeing if this helps you with making better choices and with your mental and physical well-being too. So um, that's where I think the free meals come into play. Um, I don't know if it, because people have asked me like if I've had free meals or cheat meals during prep. And I don't think I ever have with Jamie, not once. I've had refeeds. Yeah. I've had refeeds. But so they're structured. Last, last season. Yeah. Last season. Uh, I think it was actually going into Tahoe. Yeah. It was going into Tahoe a few weeks before that. Um, I was just stalling. I mean, there was weeks in a row. I was just stalling. I ended up, Jamie's like, let's just, just come out here. You know, let come, come to my house for a week and then we'll go to Tahoe together. Um, and then we started, she, she looked at me and she's like, you look lean, but there's something else going on. So she gave me a structured refeed that night of a, a filet and a potato. And I, I remember dropped this. a pound yeah. and a half the next, next mm -hmm. night. So the next night she's like, let's do it again. So we did it again. We dropped again. So we mm -hmm. kept doing it until then I started to, to, to maintain or go back up. Hindsight 2020, when I got my lab work done at the end of last prep, my iron levels were so low. So uh, it was actually my body just needing like the red meat. That's why I was responding so well to play. Um, so that it would have been a structure refeed, right? She yeah. kept pushing me, cardio was high, food was lower, nothing's happening. So she looks at me, we look lean, but there's still a little bit off, you know, some yeah. water retention, things like yeah. that. She feeds me, weight goes down. We know that that's needed. And that's, we're going to go into it in just a few minutes. I brought up two clients that I actually had two different kinds of refeeds for and one that worked and one that didn't and what yeah. that means and what that looks like. Um, so we could go into that if you want sure. to. Which, which slide those. do you want me to bring up? The, go ahead and pull up the, up um, the Excel spreadsheets and the bottom tab of okay. AW. All right. So while Sean's pulling that up, this is two different examples. Uh, these are two girls that are actually prepping for the same exact show. Um, one of them um, did give us permission to show her photos, and we'll show that in just a couple of minutes. Um, so these, yeah, this Oops. is perfect. Sorry. Does that work? No, okay. we, I I'm trying to, yeah, trying to no. get to the end of... No, you're good. Is this what Just AW? That. Is that what you wanted? Yep. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so too. basically just so you guys know what happened, you know, leading up to, you know, trying to decide if we need a refeed or not. This athlete was pushing extremely hard. Um, she had super high cardio at this point, super high being 60 minutes a day. Her step count was about 14 to 15 K steps per day. Food is actually was pretty good here. The week, um, it starts on March 15th. The week before this, I did drop her food to the 170, 160, 30 that you guys are seeing. And then you could see that her weight was just kind of stable, even though I just had dropped the food. So mm -hmm. at this point, she's checking in with me. She's telling me that she's extremely tired. She feels like she was holding a little bit of inflammation in the lower body, things like that. So at this point, as a coach, now I'm deciding what I want to do. Do I want to try to feed her a little bit more? Do I want to try to pull back on cardio a little bit more? I decide to try to do the refeed. Um, so what we can see is, let's see on, so 315, she checks in with me. She's 126.1. Remember the week before this, I did drop food and she did not drop weight. That same week, 318, so I have my clients that are eight weeks out checking in twice a week. Um, she, once again, reports low energy, high stress, and her weight was actually up 1.3 pounds. So this is when I'm deciding now at this point, okay, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. I end up continuing to push her. And then obviously you see on 322, so this was through the weekend from 318 to 322. She checks back in with me. She's down about a half a pound, but at this point she should be dropping more. In, in, in my opinion, for what I dropped her a couple weeks before that, 
or days before that. So I decided to do the refeed. So what I did was I just gave her 50 extra grams of carbs that day. And basically I told her, Hey, you could go out, you could get sushi or you could eat your normal meals. So I wanted it to be on the cleaner side. And I want you to check back in with me tomorrow. I did keep sodium and water exactly the same. Um, so she checks back in with me the next day. And what happened is her weight went up 1.1 pounds. Mm -hmm. So what does this tell us? This means that the refeed was not needed metabolically. So everybody's okay. like, wait, what does that mean? That means that she's she still has fullness, right? So the whole point of depleting and getting ready for a show is to remove muscle glycogen, to remove the extra carbohydrates that are sitting in your muscles, liver, et cetera. So when I fed her, she gained weight, which means that she still has fullness inside of the muscle. So this refeed was not needed for a metabolic purpose. It was needed for a mental, mental. purpose, mm -hmm. which both is fine. After yeah. this, she felt energized. She did feel like she should, she could push a little bit more. Obviously she had a night of some different foods. I think she did a very clean sushi. If I remember okay. like sashimi, rice, no sodium, uh, soy sauce, things like that. Um, and she felt better. She felt a little bit more energized. She had a little bit more food in her, but metabolically it wasn't needed. Yeah. Um, because if it was, we would have seen a weight drop. Now, okay. if we go to TD on the bottom, this is another client that I gave a refeed to a few weeks ago um, on that second just, tab yeah, there. Next just to a second. I'm getting to the, yeah. Getting the tab. There we go. There you go. So this is another example of a refeed. <clears throat> this client was not presenting any issues she was energized she feels good this prep no issues she's ready to push at all times however she did check in with me on the first of april and she just was looking like really flat she just didn't she wasn't she lost all of her pop i was losing some of the lines and definition so at this point i decide that i want to try a refeed with her so i did add on four one 50 grams of carbs. Her body weight at that point was 109.4. Um, and then she checked in with me the next day and she was the same. So then I'm like, hmm. Oh, well, then I was looking at her photos and uh, we did have some technical difficulties before this and I was going to show you every day, but okay. we, we only had the two, the two photos. So I was looking at her photos and she looked better. She looked tighter and she started to look a little bit fuller. So knowing that we still had four weeks and at this point I'm evaluating her conditioning and her conditioning is pretty much there. I wanted to keep pushing it and see what would happen. So that second day I decided to add another 50 grams of carbs. And I think I increased her sodium on this day too. We would have to scroll over to the far right though to see. Um, and then she dropped weight the next day. So she dropped a pound and a half. So at that point she was a hundred grams over. Yep. I increased sodium that day too. Right. Um, she was a hundred grams over her normal. She drops mm -hmm. a pound and a half and she looked tighter and fuller. So what does mm -hmm. this tell me? Her metabolism starting to pick up and her body is needing the refeed. It wants the mm -hmm. food. Yep. At that point, when she checked in and she's a pound and a half less, I gave her another 50 grams of carbs. I kept sodium the same from the increase. And then she ended up staying the same. Um, the next day, I at, uh, increased the food again one more time. And then she, she checked in about a pound and a half above. But that was the look that I wanted. She mm -hmm. looked full. She looked tight. There was some things that I wanted to change in her training, which she actually ended up looking better about four or five days later after the food was kind of still circulating, but starting to deplete again. Mm -hmm. And this was a really great kind of mock peak for me. So just so you guys know, now that I have found the look that I want, literally going, she's doing girl power next week. I am literally doing the same concept with her because it worked. And then mm -hmm. I'm just going to extend it one day so that she wakes up on for, uh, Saturday looking like this instead of Friday, according yeah. to this mock peak week. Yep. So this is an example of a refeed being needed. Remember, she didn't, she wasn't complaining. She didn't say that she felt bad. I could just tell from the body that it needed it and that she was mm -hmm. pushing hard for a while and conditioning was there. And then the metabolics warranted it. And then now, you can pull up her side by sides if you want to ask your questions or. Yeah, my question is, so let's say you get into this peak week and stuff doesn't go this way. What are you going to do? So let's say, you know, let's say that she starts down this path and we're, we're looking good. We get to, you know, this, this date here where you increase the sodium and everything. And then she, maybe she increases a couple of pounds or something, or, or maybe she drops more. Maybe she drops more. What are you going to do if she drops more? 
if she drops more, I got to feed her. And that's a very high chance. There's a mm -hmm. very high chance, yes. especially in peak week, as soon as I start feeding them, they're going to start coming down. Why? Because I'm also pour pulling back on cardio during that time. So here I didn't adjust her cardio. Her cardio stayed the same, steps stayed the same, but it's going to be altered in peak week. So I mm -hmm. am going to have to take account of that. So maybe instead of a 50 gram increase, I'll do a 75 gram increase per day. Or if she's really dropping, it depends on the rate of the drop. Maybe I give her more. Um, yeah. Um, especially with natural athletes, you have to almost f start feeding a little bit earlier because yep. their metabolism, especially if you push them that hard, it ramps up and it ramps up quick. It's a little bit more elusive than, than a typical PED client because things are so steady with the peds. Um, so if the client's natural too, I would almost err on the side of caution of trying to feed in early with a, a mm -hmm. first time competitor or someone that you haven't peaked before because you can always front load and then pull back if you need to going yep. into the show. What you don't want to happen is you start feeding on Wednesday, Thursday, and then you just cannot keep them full. They're just yep. burning through the food. And by the time stage day comes around, you're just throwing fats at them, hoping something sticks. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just depends on the look. You know, I tell the bikini athletes all the time because they get so obsessed with the weight. We're not looking at a weight. We're looking at a look. You know, mm -hmm. this gives me data and uh, something that I started tracking this week that as, as I'm, them going into their peak week is their night weight. So then mm -hmm. I have kind of an idea of their PM weight and how they're waking up. Um, so if her PM weight starts shooting down as well, I know the AM weight's going to be lower. So then I can right. adjust for the next day knowing that that's coming around. So it's right. just all about that data. And the more that I, this is my first peak with this athlete. And then the more that I peak her, the more we'll kind of get into that more structured, you know, uh, way of me knowing her body and how it works and when I need to start feeding her and, and things like that. Do you have them take photos in the in the evening too? On peak week, yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not not in the in the weeks before peak week. I start doing everyday check ins two weeks out, and then on peak week, I have them check in with me fasted, usually after training, and then in the PM. They hate me because they're taking check in photos all the time, but yep. that helps me, especially if it's our first peak together. If if we're if we've peaked together before, we've done multiple shows together before. I don't need as much data, but yes, yeah. I do because I want to see yeah. what you look like after a pump and what you look yep. like after a heavy leg day. Because then you will also have to decide on peak week. Some athletes need to train just as heavy going mm -hmm. into peak week. I do. I have to train just as heavy. I can't do like those little pump sessions unless for some reason I'm super inflamed and not feeling good on peak week. I have to keep my training intensity the same in order to keep that big fullness that you guys see when I have my best look. Some people you have to really structure back on training because they're just so inflammation sensitive that yeah. you have to do those pump those pump workouts. So those are the kind of data points that I'm collecting in the couple weeks before. Well, this is also why you have to do multiple shows with your coach too, because you're not going to nail it the first time. You're probably not going to nail it the third time. You know what I mean? And, you know, going back to the same thing with myself, like when we're talking about Hawaii, when I got my period while I was there, you know, Jamie does the same thing, has me check in in the morning and the afternoon. And she was like, you, you know, that we knew my period was coming. And that morning prior to I looked fine. There was nothing wrong. You know, I looked yeah. great, you know, and, and as we got into the afternoon, Jamie was like, you don't need to check in again if you don't want to, if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. And then right after that was when I started to feel the symptoms come on. And I was like, Ooh, this doesn't feel good. So I took photos that night when I got back to the room and she's like, yeah, you're starting to pull water. And I didn't look like that before, but you know, that, that those are the things that you can't plan for but because Absolutely. she saw because she saw that she's like okay we're gonna change things now you know we're gonna we're gonna pull back on the food we're gonna put in some diuretic we're gonna try and mitigate this water inflammation that's coming on you right now obviously it didn't work but we still tried <laughs> It's funny that you mentioned that because with the same client, um, we know she's still cycling and we know that her cycle lands on uh, girl power weekend. So what yeah. we did last week or last month is I had her take photos day one of the cycle till day mm -hmm. five of the cycle. And she mm -hmm. sent them every day to me. And this athlete does not hold a lot of water. She looks great. So we knew that that was, that was going to be okay. But we mm -hmm. have to keep that in the back of our heads, knowing that this may also affect this spreadsheet That's right. week, week based on her cycle, water retention, metabolics being lower or higher. It depends. Right. Um, but I've already collated, collected that data last month. So I know that I'm not going to be dealing with too much water retention. The only variable that I have to think about is, you know, metabolics, her resting heart rate and things like mm -hmm. that, that could be affecting the way that she blows through food or not. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it's something to keep taking into consideration. Again, she's such a healthy athlete. She's still cycling. Mm-hmm. And if you're picking a show that's on that weekend, keep that in mind. Yes. But we did this strategically knowing that junior USA is, she's going to be not on cycle. So she's going to yeah. go to junior USA right after. So hopefully it's the perfect look. Come junior <laughs> USA. And that is always my goal is that, you know, especially for a girl going to a national show, I don't want to necessarily bring them in hundred percent to the warm up show. I want them to give me feedback. I want yeah. them to tell me to bring her in tighter or to bring her in fuller that way when they see her next i capitalized on the feedback and they appreciate that they like to see that. yes and there's that that's the whole point of a warm-up show you know the whole point of the warm-up show is to try things and see how they work um and then like you said collect the data so that you can apply it the best possible way the next time you actually get on stage where it counts you know Correct. it was the same thing when i won my pro card I, I did a local show two weeks prior and you know when i did that it was one of my worst placings i got on the npc stage and they were just like you just look like you were two weeks out so just keep doing what you're doing and come in harder and leaner and, and fuller and you're good and i did that I won my pro card. You know what I mean? But that's that's the point of the of the of the warm up show. You don't want to be hundred percent at your warm up show. That's not your goal. You know, your goal the is worst to, to feedback see you, you can get is come in exactly the, the same. same. <laughs> yeah. That is the that is the worst feedback because no yep. peak is the same. Your body can't just hold this look. You know, mm-hmm. last year going into when I won Hurricane theoretically all the judges were saying like this is her best like this yeah. is absolutely jordan's best and tyler said because he wasn't at hurricane bill was bill Sabalia, and he was talking to tyler like jordan looks really good like this is a great look for her and tyler told me in my feedback he's like i heard that your look two weeks ago was like amazing and it yeah. just wasn't like that at the olympia because yeah. it's so hard to hold that so once you're there it's like ah <laughs> it's the worst feedback you could get. I would rather hear, hey, you need to be tighter, you need to be fuller. Yeah. Cool. I could do that. I can yeah. work on, with that. But yep. coming exactly the same, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> How do I do that? <laughs> you know, it's hard. You're dealing with the human body. You could copy and paste just like, you know, your 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 question is warranted. So, Jordan, you're going to copy and paste this, but what happens if the body doesn't respond the same way? Well, mm-hmm. obviously, then I need to pivot, but it's, it's almost physically impossible. You just have yeah. to be ready for those pivot points. And this is why you have to have an attentive coach, too. I mean, that, that can look at those things and have the data and say, okay, this was working last time, but it's not now. So what do we need to do? You know, and that's why you try different things ahead of time and say, okay, well, this worked, so let's go this direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got those pieces where you can put them together and it's not a hundred percent, but at least it's better than just shooting, you know, a shot in the dark and just seeing if maybe it'll land. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like at least you got something to work from and that's, right. that's why you try these things ahead of time. So did yeah. you want me to pull her pictures up? Sure. Yeah. So the photos that we put side by side, again, I was going to show you guys every day, but we ended up just doing the um, first day of the refeed to the last day. So something that i noticed with her right away was her quads um Mm -hmm. so if you notice so the left side is the the day that she kind of looked really flat to me like up in her upper outer glute and the side glute you could kind of just see a lot of lines and things like that Mm -hmm. compared to the right side she has a lot more fullness in the hamstrings and in the glute i didn't love her quads though on the in in the photo on the right so what we did was we added in a little bit of leg extensions and like i said she checked in two to to three to four days later and she looks so much more complete now i didn't want to give the complete package i'm trying to hide her a little bit um (laughs) So she looks, she looks very, very balanced now. looks great with her lines. So this was a perfect look for for us. Um, And then the back shot, you can also tell, well, you can also tell here she looks tighter, um, like in the back, back leg and things like that. Um, You can, you can clearly see like her shoulders are fuller on the right. Yep. Um, Yep. Just her her waistline. You can see it in her waistline too, you know? Um, And I can see where where the waistline aspect could be one of those things that you want to tweak, you know, if you're talking about just wanting to bring it down a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, the roundness and fullness of the shoulders is pretty evident to me. Um, And I see what you're talking about with the the legs, everything, and the glutes too. Because remember on this day, she woke up one and a half pounds mm-hmm. higher Heavier. than the yep. previous day. So this is actually a little spilled, which is okay. Yep. If I could get her mm-hmm. like this going to bed the night before, she's going to wake up that perfect look like yeah. she did two to three days later. When she and then all she has to do is pump her shoulders a little bit before she, before she goes on stage. And she's good, you know? Yep. Really, yep. really easy little, little tweaks. We've little tweaks. For you. Okay. Here's the back shot for you. This one's pretty significant, I think. Yeah, I already got on her too about the uh, 
the opening in the back post. She already knows that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, her glutes, glutes and hamstrings for sure. And again, yeah. I wanted a little bit more quad coming out in that right, uh, that right shot. So once, once we added in those leg extensions, now she's got just this beautiful fullness and detailed almost allows the upper outer glutes to really pop. Um, Does she have different, she has different shoes on. Does she? Oh yeah, yeah she has London, different right? shoes on. <laughs> yep. She's this girl, Therese, she's she's great. She's been competing forever. She's got like three different suits. She's got all the heels. She's like, which ones do you want me to wear? I'm like, I don't know. Well, that can make a difference in your stance and everything too. I feel like the ones on the left have a higher arch than the ones on Better. the right. Yeah. I'm gonna make a note yeah. of that. Therese, I know you're watching this. We, don't, we want the shoes on the right. Those mm -hmm. are her sparkly ones. Sparkly mm -hmm. shoes. Thank you. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that can yeah. that can definitely change the way that your body looks and everything too. So just the way yeah. that your arches and your heels. And she's Absolutely. yeah, I'm looking at the front shot too. The, yeah, she's got the different heels on the front too, because that could have been a difference in, in the quads that you're seeing too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, we just caught so, we just caught something. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the this is the collaboration of the right. right this here. is why that's right. That's why you have to have multiple eyes sometimes. Eyes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that that was. Uh, what I would call a successful refeed. So yeah, hopefully no, that gives you guys a lot some color. context. You know, uh, like from the back, I think this is pretty close to being right on with the glutes. You know what I mean? Like you were saying, like from the front, you she looks a little spilled through the waistline, but that's what you. This is what you want in the back. You want. know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So, really close. Yep. Tweaking, Tweaking yeah. things. You know, it, 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 for those of you that are watching, we realize that this is very like in depth, <laughs> you know, like the normal person, when you're looking at those two photos, probably doesn't see what we see, you know, like they probably don't see the fullness. They probably don't see. So that's why we show you this stuff and try to explain it so that maybe you can get a little bit of a better eye, but we don't expect you to be able to see this stuff. We've been doing this for years. You know, you guys, you guys aren't coaches. Most of you watching this aren't coaches, you know, that kind of thing. You're just trying to understand it a little bit better for you. So hopefully you can see these little things that we're talking about, but if you can't, that's okay. That's why I have coach. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. why we that's why we that's why we make the money that we do doing what we do you know what i right. mean because we can see these things and the judges see these things they do and that's what they're talking about when we're talking about fuller or tighter or leaner or rounder or whatever you know what i mean those are the things that 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 a trained eye can see you know i talk about that all the time when we're talking about sports and stuff like i don't i don't really watch wrestling all that much but my husband loves wrestling so he can pick up on every little thing i have no clue i've watched wrestling with him since we started dating freaking 16 years ago and i still don't know what's going on <laughs> you know like you try so, though i try i give it i give it my all <laughs> i'm like i'm like i don't know he can just go off and just talk about it for hours and i don't i have no fucking clue what's going on none right but you know that's that's because he's trained at it and he knows is what he's looking at and he loves the sport and that's what he does and that's again going back to what we do we are trained at this we know what we're looking at this is stuff we look at every single day with multiple people so if you can't see it it's okay that that's why you pay us to do it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and i think too it's just important to know like knowing we're talking about refeeds again that's structured it is for a purpose it is mm -hmm. for a, a metabolic or a GI purpose. Like that is, that is it. And most of the time when girls start prep with me for like one to two weeks and they're like, so Jay, when am I going to get a refeed? And I'm like, we just started. Like, yeah. so refeeds are really not coming in until you are deep in prep, like deep in prep. So mm -hmm. just kind of have that timeline. Oh, this is also, yes. Thank you. This is also yeah. something I put together for you guys. So really like just putting in the difference between like the refeed and the cheat meal. Um, so we already talked about, you know, the refeed is more for that metabolic purpose where the three meals more for like that emotional purpose, date night, girls nights, you know, things like that. Just that emotional release. Yep. Um, so go ahead and screenshot this, you guys, you can put it up and, and share it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we already talked about, you know, refeed, if it was truly needed for a physical purpose, then you would have a sign of fasted weight dropping. It's, mm -hmm. it's very simple as that. If you take a refeed and your weight increases and your body just did not need it physically at that point in time. Um, obviously with a free meal, weight's probably not decreasing, right? We have, right. you know, from the extra sodium, the extra volume yes. of food, your weight's it's probably, probably going to go, go up, up, you know, one to three pounds, you know, and then mm -hmm. it will slowly start tapering down because again, those free meals are the more fun foods, you know, the burgers, the fries, the, mm -hmm. you know, sushi, you know, sushi rolls, or, you know, just more of those fun, fun foods, you know, desserts, things like that. Yeah. 
Um, I hate to put this up here, but I know it's going to be a thing. I don't usually like to feed feelings to people because then they're like, oh, no, no, I'm going to have everybody checking in next week. Oh, coach, I'm tired. Give me a refeed. Uh, Um, But some signs of a refeed are poor recovery. So like you are training and you just can't recover. You're very tired. You're sore. You hurt, et cetera. And it's just there's no letting up. It's just constant. Mm -hmm. Uh, Poor sleep. Poor sleep can definitely be a sign that a refeed is needed, especially if weight is not dropping. Weight stalls, um, inflammation, water. So a look. Again, Therese felt fine, but she had a look to her that I knew yeah. she was off. So that's yeah. when I made that 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 call. Um, looking flat, you know, obviously. So again, Therese was flat before I started feeling her. So I knew she had more muscle from her off season. Um, so I wanted to kind of see what that muscle looked like and see if we can make her a little bit fuller and that's exactly what happened. Um, so signs of a free meal. So just food focused, you know, you've been mm-hmm. dieting for a while and you want to cheat. Like you want to be grabbing for things. You maybe you are grabbing for things. Maybe you just need a free meal. You know, you go out, you eat that burger and fries, you get up from the table and you walk away and you're like, cool, I'm done. Let's Feel get better. back to dieting. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Cheating mental freedom. So again, that, that just that emotional release and then the emotional tax. So the emotional tax is what I refer back to my Oreo cookie story. I didn't yeah. necessarily, I didn't want to call my coach and ask for the Oreo cookie. I was just so affixated on it and emotional about it. Then I ate the cookie and I was fine. So sometimes yeah. you just have to allow yourself whatever that need is emotionally so that you can move forward. Yes. Um, the difference between a refeed and free meal, this is often, again, mistaken. People use these terms interchangeably and they're completely different. So the refeed is very structured, right? So as you could see with Therese, I gave her 50 grams of carbs each day, but she just ate her same foods. So she wasn't going out for sushi. She wasn't going out. It was her same foods, just in more amounts. Mm-hmm. However, with with um, my other client, I did the opposite. I gave her sushi because I had a feeling it was more of an emotional release. I actually gave her the option to like go out to Um, eat with her boyfriend, but her boyfriend was working that night. So I kind of knew it was going to be more emotional than a metabolic need. Um, But that's why I gave her the sushi versus having her normal foods. But usually a repeat is very structured that way, or I'll allow them to go get sushi and I'll tell them what they can eat, you know, 25 sashimis with rice, 25 with just the nigiri, you know, I'll give them that structure. Right. Um, And then the free meal, one of those fun foods, we already talked about that. This is the warning that I wanted to give um, because it is, it is very, very nerving when this happens, but it is very normal. It is very normal that after a refeed or a free meal that you are not satisfied. And yeah. if anything, it will make you more hungry. And that is the risk as a coach that you have to take. There are some clients that you give them that refeed and they are then starving because you have picked up that metabolism and they are just insatiable at that point. And kind of once you get that metabolism roaring and that hunger going, it's uncontrollable. And the mm-hmm. athlete's suffering then at that point. And some can handle it and some cannot, but it is maddening, especially if this happens to you for the first time, first time competitor, your coach gives you that refeed and you're looking for like this fullness and the satiety, but it's actually creating the opposite effect. And that's where girls then go ravenous and then the, the, the binge can start. So it is a warning for you guys that are maybe distributing symptoms of a refeed that is needed to know in the back of your head that it could help but it could also hurt your hunger cues. Sometimes if you're just that that deep in prep and you're having that little bit of hunger, but you're in that numb point, sometimes it's better just to keep rolling with that numb point, you know? Yeah, um, but through. that's that's the caveat, you know? It, and that's normal and it sucks when that happens. And it's just like, you're like, man, why did I even take the meal? Yeah. But also remember that when you are hungry, it's working. You are dropping body fat. So that if you take that refeed and you are just insatiable, you have that super, super high hunger, just hold on, let it ride for about three to four days. You're going to drop. You're mm-hmm. going to continue to see those drops if you can hang with the hunger and allow it to ride itself out. Yep. And I think this is also going back to what you were saying. You, you don't like to feed feelings because Sometimes you need to be honest with yourself with these situations. Some girls will not communicate how badly they're feeling. You know, they're, they're more like, I have to suffer. This is how, I'm, how it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to suffer. Yeah. I do that. <laughs> yep. I so do that. <laughs> there's, there, 
there's there's times to be honest about how hard it is for you, right? Yes. I'm that person where most of the time things aren't difficult for me. I'm just that's just how I am. But I'll be the first one to admit that when I checked in today with Jamie, I told her what happened this past week, you know, because it was hard for me this this week. It wasn't in a different scenario, you know. I actually didn't want to eat. It was different, you know what I mean? But I was super fatigued. But that's hard too. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that is, is a symbol of something being off as well. And again, it was hormonally for me, you know, that kind of thing. So I have to be honest with myself and say, it's okay that I was super fatigued and I need to communicate that because that is going to indicate what happened after that. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, going one way, you, you, you may be trying to, some clients will try to make it easier on themselves. I feel like from, at least from my own personal experience, most most clients are trying to make it more difficult for themselves. You know, we're in a different mindset when we're competing. We're in this mindset of suffer. We have to suffer. Um, so it's it's being able to be honest with, okay, this is actually too much suffering. <laughs> you know what I mean? Versus, That's a you know, great versus point. This kind of thing. Yeah. I just had a client that um, she just started prep about four weeks ago. She's had some very slow drops despite everything that we've done. I finally got on a call with her. She was actually doing more. She was doing hit training and I didn't have mm-hmm. hit training into the program. And she was making all of these adjustments because she was like, well, I'm in prep and I feel good right now. So I want to push. And I was like, as an athlete, it's important to know when to push and yes, when to pull, pull back. Up. At yep. this point, you're pushing too hard, too quick. And your body's like, I don't know what I'm doing. And she yes. has inflammation. She has shin splints. This is not how you're supposed to be feeling three weeks into prep. This is like when cardio is like feeling good and food's dropping and you're like mm-hmm. feeling yourself a little bit. Like, so again, it's important just to follow your plan. Like if you're, yes. if your coach says, I want, you know, four days a week of steady state cardio, then do steady state cardio. There's no reason right. to go, well, I need to do hit right now. Save hit for when it's needed. That's um, right. And communicate that, you know, and again, I got on the phone with this athlete, you know, we talked it through and I was like, why are you doing all this? And she's like, I don't know. I thought I was doing the right thing by pushing harder when I felt good. And I get that. I get that mindset. However, if it's not on the plan, your coach is not expecting you to do it. And it alters what we're trying to do with you. So now if you start hit too early and then we're six weeks in and I need you to push more, where do I go from here? That's right. Where do I go from here? You have now pulled all my cards away. Yes. Life is about chess. It's about keeping things in the bank for when we need it. So mm-hmm. communication is key at that point. Hey, coach, I'm feeling good. Do you want me to ramp it up? I feel like I can ramp up, but maybe I will. But yep. don't do anything till we talk about it. That's right. Well, and a great example of that is I just had a client that, that sent in a note to me last night and saying how she was in the gym and she was feeling it. And so she just kept pushing and kept going and kept going and kept going. And then she felt fatigued when she left and she pulled up one of our podcasts talking about like when she was driving home talking about um, what it takes to compete. And she's like, and I realized I just kind of shot myself in the foot because I did too much. <laughs> she goes, and then of course, and then she's like, now she's telling me she wants to pull out a prep. And I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's and like then that, your training's it's affected spiral. the rest of the week. Now she gets only one great session because her body's not going to be recovered all week, you know? So at that point, was it appropriate to push just because you Mm -hmm. could? No, push what you can, whatever it is for that session, recover, and then go use that energy for the next day. That's right. It's very so, important to manage This is recovery. actually a very good um, way to segue into one of our questions. So guys, we're going to do sure. a whole full day of questions on Sunday. We're going to do a new podcast on Sunday. We have a ton of questions that came in. So we're going to use that day to just go through all of them, right? But I have one sitting right here that I thought we could kind of go into because it's a little bit related to this. Um, so I'll go ahead and put this up. So it says, how, many, how much cardio or calories would be too low to start a cut. So you were just talking about pulling cards, right? So um, I know this is person dependent. That's the first thing. As we always talk about, this is the 100% person dependent. It depends. <laughs> it depends. It's always. not the sexy it answer. Depends. <laughs> yes. But, you know, going into what you were just saying about, okay, if you were already doing hit, hit cardio, now I have nothing I can pull and put in there for you to cut more. If you're not eating and you're doing too much activity, I have nowhere to cut you. I have nowhere to cut you. Right. Um, I have a client now that I just brought on that, you know, we're just going through the onboarding process and she does want to do a show this year. She's actually got a great frame. She's got great structure, you know, great muscle. But she's not, she's not eating enough and she's running. And I'm like, you know, we have to cut all this stuff back. And actually when I told her that we were going to cut her running out, she was like, Oh, I thought I had to do all this. I said, no, uh, uh-uh, you don't need to do any of this. <laughs> I was like, I was like, right we're all of it. <laughs> I was like, we don't need any. I was like, first of all, we got to, we got to get your food up. You know, I can't, I can't diet you if you're only taking in eight eight to 900 calories a day. There's no place for me. Yeah, exactly. I said, there's no place for me to pull. 
there's no, nothing. And you're already doing a ton of cardio. I was like, I'm, I'm looking at her pictures. I'm like, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how you have this much muscle. I'm like, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know how you're maintaining it. To be away, honest. Yeah. You yeah. know? So, um, so there, there's genetics. certain, t- yeah, genetics. Exactly. I was like, you know, so we got to get your food up. We got to get your, you know, your cardio down. She was cool with all of it. She's like, okay, cool, awesome. The one thing she doesn't want to do, she doesn't want upper food because she doesn't want to feel full. And I said, listen, I said, we got to get your food up. We can't have you eating under a thousand calories a day. We can't do that. I said, cause I can't pull body fat off of you like that. I said, so we just got to pick foods that are going to be higher in vo- uh, density versus volume. So you don't have that super full feeling that you don't like, but we got to get those nutrients in period. So, you know, if you have a, a ticket, a, a random client, where do you like them to be at as far as like their maintenance calories and things like that to be able to start them on a prep? Where do you, where do you like them to start? I mean, it's very, it's just a very arbitrary number, but usually about 1900 to 2000 or over. Yeah. Um, I think that's enough room for a 20 week long prep to pull from if, you know, usually my approach, again, everybody's different, but a typical approach for me is to be very aggressive out the gate while Mm -hmm. people are fresh, they're ready. They're super excited for prep. I'll try to make that 500 calorie drop off the top and then like moderate cardio right away. And that usually will get them stimulated the first few weeks. Um, so I, I don't know what too low would be. It would be very person dependent. And the, mm-hmm. that was a perfect example that Sean just said. If a client's coming to us already on 800 calories and doing at least, I would say, 30 minutes of cardio a day, mm-hmm. that's a really bad starting point for prep. I would never prep somebody with that presenting to me with that. Right. That that does not set me up for success, nor them. That is, yes. in, my, in my opinion, an unhealthy starting phase. Correct. At the end of a prep, if we're there, fine. But starting, no, that doesn't give us enough no. room. Um, so yeah, I would say about over, I, I, I want to just say comfortably over 1800 calories for sure. Yeah. And I would say too, it, it's person dependent as well. Like I have a, another one that I've just brought on and um, she looks great too, but she's not solid and she should be. She's been in an improvement season for two years you know, her and just her giving me her stats. I'm like, you know, honestly, what you're eating and what you're doing is not bad. I said, you're on no cardio. That's a great starting point. That's fantastic. Um, you're lifting decent, you know, but, and even with her calories, her calories are 20, 21 calories. So it's not, that's not bad. I said, but based on what you've told me you've been doing for the last two years, I would think you would be higher. And I would think that you would actually have more muscle than you do. You know, and I'm looking over her stats and I'm realizing her macros just weren't set up correctly. You know, she just didn't have enough, enough protein to really gain things like that. Yeah. She's so, yeah. you know, she's taking in good, good amount of food, but it's just not working for her. Right. Right. So we have to restructure that a little bit. And I'm hoping just by restructuring her macros a little bit, we're going to see some pretty decent, um, gains, you know, recant recomp of her frame and all that kind of stuff right out of the gate. And if that's the case, we can probably get her, her calories up a little bit higher. higher. You know, she's on no cardio. So that's fantastic. You know what I mean? And that gives us a really good place to start when we start to cut her down. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, you know, that's for me, that where she is, is almost ideal because we just have to make a few little, little adjustments to start seeing results. Um, yeah. If you're, if you're way, way off, like I was mentioning the girl that was under a thousand calories, we got a lot to do before we can, before we can really cut you down, you know? Yep. Um, and, and if you're prep for prep, yeah, that's right. You know, and, and again, going back to this, this new role with the, that's at the 2100 calories, I, you know, I feel like if she went to another coach, um, they might tell her she's okay to start cutting you know, but I see where she can improve her shape um, so that when she does cut, you know, she's going to be successful. You know, there's, there's, there's little things that we can do to make it a little bit better right now. So even though she's in a good spot, even though, you know, on paper, it looks good, you know, there's, there's things that we still need to do in order, in order to get her to a spot where I think she's going to be successful when she actually gets to stage time, you know? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a, there's a bunch of different balls that are always in the air in this. And then also taking into account lab work and things like that. So I have both the two that I'm just talking about, I have both of them doing lab work, you know, all that kind of stuff, make sure they're good up eternally. Um, so again, one girl, she, she should have more muscle. She should be higher than she is as far as, as far as where her stats are. So I want her to get her blood work done and make sure that we're okay with that, you know? So um, those are all things to take into account. So there's no, never like a, this is too low, but you, you kind of know at the same time when you're too low. <laughs> Like you want to be in the most optimal spot possible. So then that way you have more cards to pull when you're actually in prep. You don't want to say, okay, I think we can start now because I think we're okay. No, we want to be more than okay. We want to be more than okay. So that we have wiggle room once we get there. Um, 
you know, I always use the example, a coach that I had before Jamie, when, when they would start me on my off season, I, when I was in off season, I would be on the same amount of, of calories intake as I have been on peak week with Jamie. So I look back at, I'm like, man, I'm like, sometimes I think about that kind of stuff. I'm like, if, if, if coaches in the past had just fed me, I wonder where I would be right now. <laughs> because I'm like, I've made so much progress in the last four years versus, you know, what I did for my entire career because my coaches just never fed me. Fed. You know? Yeah. Jamie's so good at that. Like yeah. I, I, I have never been fed this much. And especially going into like a show, like she even says, like, I wish I feed, I, she always says, I wish I fed you a little bit more. Like she, she loves to feed. Like she yep. wants that fullness. And I will say Jamie is one of, you know, I'm biased, I guess, but she definitely has that eye. I mean, yeah. she's got that eye for a bikini Absolutely. and that's just something you cannot teach. Like oh. she just has it. And um, she's always feeding us. Like there's, there's been one or two athletes where they can't just because genetically they're like your client they are they mm -hmm. just have this amount of muscle and fullness and they don't need it but other yep. than that she's feeding and i yep. love that feeling because i used to remember on peak week like it was like a treat on peak week or on show morning that i got to eat protein pancakes like and that was the <laughs> yes. only time that i got to cheat so like i loved show day because i was able to cheat that day but yeah it's such like you know it's such a different approach with her like she's pulling back on cardio in the beginning and this is the way that i peak my athletes now and they mm -hmm. love this approach too because they feel so good come show day there's yeah. been one show that i was not ready for that she had to push me i think it was actually uh tahoe 20 uh not the one I won, 2021, two. And I had no energy that day. She's like, what's yeah. going on with you? But I'm like, I don't, I'm, I have no food, so I have no energy. That was the one and only time that we had to do that though. So yeah. it makes a difference. It really it does. does make a difference to be fed into show day and feel like full and energized yeah. and like you're ready to go. So you're not crawling yeah. to the finish line, but. Well, and then, then just the concept of, like you said, you got to cheat on show day morning. I used to, I had, again, I had a coach that did that too, where they would feed me pancakes in the morning. And I felt like ass when I got on stage because I couldn't hold my stomach in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. No, I'm like, I know I don't look but good. I, I look like I'm six better. months pregnant. I know. No, we just did what, the, what our coach told us to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We did what our coach told us to do. That's what everybody does. You're supposed to eat pancakes before you go on stage. So that's what you do. You know? <laughs> it's like during that time, that's what people were yeah. doing. Right. Like that yeah. was the normal. So I'm not saying that like our coaches were right. Like that's what their normal was. That's right. And now that's why I'm so appreciative of like the new research behind our sport mm -hmm. and the different approaches and that those are better for the athlete. And I know for yeah. like, like athletes on my schedule, like my attention to detail is not for everybody. Like a first time competitor is usually not tracking their sodium and water and, you know, sticking with certain foods and things like that, but mm -hmm. they are going to be successful. And it does allow me more autonomy and bringing a look that they want to do for a stage where, Absolutely. you know, with some other coaches with a first time athlete, they don't push them out harder. They don't expect that out of them. But then when they get later on down the line, like I was this past couple of years in the pro league, I'm catching up on all these things. Like mm -hmm. I told you guys like a few, a few uh, podcasts ago, I'm just now tracking sodium starting last year. This is something I've never done before. And I've gotten away with it up until this point. But if I was just would have done it sooner, who knows? Who knows? Happen, right? I know. I know. You know, and that's what and that's what you're saying. You know, <laughs> yep. so it's like just do it right from the start, in my opinion. And again, my coaching style is not for everybody. Totally okay with that. But for the ones that are on my schedule, they love it. They love that attention yeah. to detail. They love that I can make small adjustments and they see something different because of that strictness and those data yep. points that I'm constantly looking at. Well, I think also like it's kind of a good thing to have bad experiences because then you know when a good experience has come your way. <laughs> you know, absolutely. For myself. I know that's Absolutely. for myself. Like I know now how messed up some of my past preps were like eating a whole pizza, <laughs> you know, like that, yeah. that was messed up. And you appreciate up. it. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. what I'm doing now. Like, and that's, so sometimes having those bad things happen or being less than optimal is a good thing because then you can really see it when you're on the right track. Sometimes you Absolutely. can, like we always talk about how like the failures are what make the wins so sweet, you know? So you have to have those Same failures. Concept. You know, you, yep. you can't, you can't appreciate the wins if you don't fail a bunch of times first, you know, that, that that's what makes you appreciate those wins. So, you know, it, it, it six in one hand, half dozen the other, would I be where I am today? Would I be better? Would I, would I be worse? You know, if I hadn't gone through this, the things that I'd gone through, I don't know, but they've made me who I am today. So, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're, we are who we are. We all have mistakes. We all have, we've all cheated. <laughs> I, have. So, I know I have. I know I have. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, those have all made us who we are now. Those have all made us the competitors that we are now. So I don't know. You can't really, I can't, that's why I say all the time, like, I can't really regret it because 
if I hadn't made those mistakes before, I wouldn't appreciate where I am now. So it's just, or be the coach you are now. That's right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. be able to say, no, don't do that. <laughs> that's right. not, or that's I did not that. Good. It didn't work for me. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've been there. I've done that. I've made those mistakes. You can learn yeah. from mine. So you don't have to do it yourself. Have to do it. Yep. You know, so I, I've yep. been around the block and then and back again. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing with posing. Like I remember my first posing routine and God, my first posing coach was awful. Now knowing like what was needed and all my girls, like, I'm so hard on them with their posing, but I'm like, your first posing presentation is going to be so beautiful. And you're going to yeah. be so appreciative, especially for the people that I know they're one and done. Like, I want mm -hmm. them to have that video, those photos and nail it and be yep. so proud of it. And I wish that that's what I got because now I look back on those videos and photos from my first show and such a transformation, so appreciative, funny, all the things, but like, it would have been so great for it to be beautiful and perfect the first yeah. one but it just wasn't so yep. i don't know it's just it's just us just like you said we're taking our own mistakes and our own experiences that didn't work for us and translating it to our coaching and that's what i love you know i love that i'm able to give that back to our community to the bikini athletes people yeah. that are on my roster people that aren't and that you know really make them their best yeah and we have better resources now too i mean to be honest like when i was starting out there weren't posing coaches they didn't exist that wasn't something right it wasn't you know this is, again this is 15 years ago like there, there was no such thing as a posing coach i went on to bodybuilding.com and that was it I, you know my my coach at the time would send me photos and just that was what i went on here do of. this yeah and that's it you know i yep. went to i can't even remember i think the first time i ever went to even a posing clinic wasn't until I've been competing and I was almost a pro Gary Udit used to do these perfect posing clinics and I did it like six weeks before I actually won my pro card. And that's the first time I ever went and posed in front of somebody and not like on stage in a competition, you know, that's crazy. so, so you yeah, and access to so much now. Yeah. And that's how it was. This is actually a good time for us to talk about our Fit Body Fusion Athlete Summit. There you go. Yes. Go ahead and go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Cause I know you'll be there. I won't be going to that, but you'll be there. Yeah. So go ahead and give it a little, I'll a little be boost. there. Yeah, so it's a it's May fifth, May fourth, Saturday in San Antonio, Texas. We're putting on a Fit Body Fusion Athlete Summit. This is for all athletes. You do not have to be an athlete; just a Fit Body Fusion. We have a bunch of pros and Olympians that are going to be there to help with posing. Um, Sandy Williamson is going to be there. She'll be talking, yeah. and I think we're going to be doing a mock stage day as well. So that will give you a chance to get up on stage in front of Sandy, get some really good feedback. So for those of you that are out there that want to get that kind of one-on-one -on -one time with Sandy and you're going into national shows this year, what a moment, like what an opportunity mm -hmm. for you guys. Um, then we're going to have like some suit sponsors out there. We're going to have Toxic out there. And I think we have some jewelry people out there. So just some like people from the, from the industry. It's going to be a great day. It's going to, it's one day only really good time to get one-on-one -on -one time with all of your favorite pros, Olympians from Fit Body. And we're going to be doing just like lots of posing, lots of educational talks. Um, it, there is a sign up. Um, so you guys can go on to the Fit Body Fusion Instagram page and there's a little link tree at the top where you can click and sign up. Um, the hotels are really uh, great because it has like the, the kitchenettes and things like that, mm -hmm. super affordable. So any questions you guys can feel free to DM me or DM the Fit Body Fusion page, but we're really excited for this event. And I think a lot of people think it's only for Fit Body Fusion athletes, but it's not, it's for everybody. And I know there's a lot of people in Texas. So hopefully you guys can all come out. And it's in San Antonio, right? Yes. You, you don't have the location on you. I'll, I'll put it in the description box. I'll put it in the I description know that box. it's um the, I know the host hotel is the San Antonio Aloft airport, Aloft San Antonio airport. Okay. So that's a, okay. I know it's, I, I don't know if it's there or if it's at another location. I can look that up though. Okay. Yeah. Give me, I'll, I'll pull it up too. I've got it in my, in my message. In our too. WhatsApp. So, in our yeah. WhatsApp. So I'll pull it up and stick it into the, the description box so they can click through. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and on that note, that's a good place I think to stop for today. So guys, we are going to do another, um, uh, another podcast on Sunday, um, because we got travel coming up and all that kind of fun stuff. So what we're going to do on Sunday is we're going to do just a Q and a, so any questions that you have, I mean, I'm sitting here looking at about 10 of them that we haven't, haven't gotten to yet that I've written in. And I know Jordan's got a bunch I have of them too. On my phone. Yeah. So feel free to, to DM us. Feel free to put them in the comment box below, share it, you know, all that kind of stuff. Let us know any questions that you have. We'll get to as many of them as we can. Can um, I, I can't promise we'll do all of them, <laughs> but we'll do as many as we can. Cause you know, we talked about, we talked about one and it takes us 15 minutes. <laughs> so, you know, 
<laughs> we'll do as many questions as we we'll can. We'll have plenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. That, and, you know, if we don't get to them, we'll get to them on future podcasts and all that kind of stuff too. So with that, you guys, I really appreciate all of the support as always. We are always loving um, all the interaction and stuff that we hear from you guys from the, uh, you know, just DMing us and thanking us for the information or something like that too. So that's cool. We love that. And the more that you do that kind of stuff too, it, it motivates us to do more. Um, but it also gives us ideas of what you guys need too. So the, we pick up on stuff that you all tell us and then that's where our topics come from. So um, thanks guys. Again, remember like, subscribe, comment, share all of the things that you're supposed to do here on YouTube for us. <laughs> and, and please, 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 please. And thank you. And so for episode 34, Behind the bikini, we are out. Bye.